He's dominated ladder since set four fates. He's held onto rank one the longest out of any player. But what separates Setsuko from the other top players? In this episode of Into Deep, we analyze a ladder game played by Setsuko to show off why exactly he is so dominant and how this man is truly built different. We discuss how he maximizes playing strongest board every round with the intention of preserving HP and not rolling a single time unless absolutely necessary. So we're loading into carousel. So Suko usually likes to start bow, but he's going for the sword and it's on an ash, which if you look at it, that makes sense because Ash really loves to have AD items, which brings us to, you know, our first concept here we want to talk about, which is you can also look for the combination of the item plus the champion for your strong opener. Ash loves to have that sword for death blade, infinity edge, giant slayer. And not only is good for her, as an item holder, but also if you choose to reroll, starts off with Sona, Sona with Infinity Edge, makes it unlikely for him to actually play as Sona carry, but maybe holds it for underground. Ends up holding Gangplank as well. I don't think he's gonna sell the Sona for the other units because he's not really playing around Poppy Wukong. He'd rather play around the Laser Core with his Ash or Duelists. And also we mentioned that he likes to play around that underground. Picks up Vest, meaning that the only strong slammable item early would be Infinity Edge. And even then, unless you have a lot of base stats, you're not super excited about slamming Infinity Edge. Not to mention that people are becoming less and less inclined to slam these crit items like Jewel Gauntlet and Infinity Edge early because of the possibility of Jeweled Lotus. Jeweled Lotus gives you that effect anyways, so why would you want to slam it so we'll see what ends up happening looks like we can pick up like rel and pantheon good frontline units okay so let's pause here so we mentioned jewel lotus and guess what shows up so he could pick jewel lotus which is generically a very very strong augment most people say jewel lotus is just giving you eight items that being said Zuko does have a board that can potentially streak because he has a two star ash you can lean into laser core and so laser core could use knife's edge for example because you can get the raw flat ad on warwick and then play things like the edge of night and use that glove for anything else that's relevant for that strategy but this is a really interesting spot because Setsuko picks built different and he ends up picking up a rel pair. So now he actually has a lot to build upon. He could level and try to win streak. When you play built different, it is a win streak oriented board and also test your knowledge of understanding early game better than others, which is pretty much Setsuko's forte. Setsuko is really strong when he plays things like build different because he understands how to capitalize on the extra health and the extra attack speed. And all the units that he's choosing right now are going to scale off of that. So he has his two star Ash levels, gets to win 4v3. So this is really easy of a victory because he just simply outnumbers his opponent. But I'm curious to see how he's going to build his board specifically to maximize the efficiency of build different with each unit. Like, does he hold this size resolution? Silas is not particularly strong, so he holds on to Lucian instead. Finds a Pantheon pair. Oh, okay. So Neela is actually quite good because she is just good to keep your frontliners alive, but he already has the Star Guardian with the Rel. So now he picks Nar and looks like he's comparing stats. So if you look, Camille has 940 health, Nar has 990 health, and more stats, offensive stats, on top of that, meaning that this Nar is just better. And it makes sense because Nar is a tier three unit and Camille's a tier two unit. So traditionally speaking, units that are higher tier have higher base stats. So one to one, you are inclined to play the three costs over that two cost early game. And that brings us to a really important concept. When you're playing win streak oriented compositions or augments, stats are king. More flat stats early are strong versus percentage based stats are stronger later. This is because early game, you're scaling units that don't even have a lot of base numbers to work with. Let's say you get 20% more HP, but if you have a low number, that doesn't really make sense. But 20% HP in the late game, when you have all this stuff like war mogs and big active synergies are going to be much more impactful. And so playing these flat stats, like build different just gives you straight up HP or straight up attack speed is really, really powerful to synergize with units that have higher base stats. So we're playing Jax, we're playing this Rel 1. We play the threat, by the way, which is really nice because this is a good observation that Ramus has higher base stats than the Rel 1. 
But unfortunately, we queue into a level 5 player, and no amount of raw stats is going to help us when your opponent is playing a straight-up extra unit than us. So we lose at 2-3, which is kind of a disaster. Now we have to think about what we want to take off Carousel. We choose something that costs 3 gold, so helps us get a little bit of that economy going. He chooses more offensive items because Ash is the two-star unit to play around. Not to mention, without traits being active in the late game, you want to make sure you have a really strong set of items. And if he's going to be leaning to AD, he needs that last whisper. So that way you can make sure to maximize all of that AD items. So I anticipate him to slam last whisper. What I'm curious about is if he's going to slam the infinity edge a lot of times people are scared to slam that infinity edge because they might get that possibility of jeweled lotus but we already had jeweled lotus offered to us we can't get that offered again so he could theoretically slam it here if he wants to the downside of it is he doesn't have a lot of flat stats again to work with because ash is not really high ad champion so if he does slam infinity edge it's not as impactful but he doesn't need to, thankfully, because he's going up 5v4 against his opponent. Gets a really, really easy win. It's also nice they picked up that Pantheon, too, because his front line was looking a little inconsistent as he's playing around with his boys, putting units in, taking units out, trying to see what works. Build difference is also one of those augments where you just want to go back to streaking even if you lose. Yes, losing sucks. And in other situations, once you lose your streak, you are okay with losing a few more because you want to just lean into that momentum that you have. But build different is... Well, it's different because you need to play a completely altered game plan where you don't get to bank off of late game scaling with synergies. So try to get that momentum back into your favor. Okay, so Zuko actually positioned in the second row. This, let me actually rewind and see why he did this. All right, so Zuko's scouting around. He's looking a lot at re-replay specifically the wind streaker because that's the strongest board that he'll face against. Ends up moving his positioning up closer so that way, well, one, Ash is still protected against Re-Replay, who positioned top left. And his Ash will be able to move up. This is actually a really small thing, but potentially could pay off big dividends, where he wants to cut down the amount of time his carry can walk and waste DPS. It's the same reason why things like Scope Weapons and Rapid Fire Cannon can be really powerful on melee champions, because you're reducing that downtime where they're not auto-attacking. So it's a small thing doesn't really need it whatsoever, so he ends up getting that victory very easily. And now Setsuko is back on the train. You know, he's two win, one loss, two win. Yeah, it sucked he didn't five streak, but in terms of the best possible outcome after that loss, looks like everything lined up. We repay is still a possible opponent, so he's scouting him. Also taking a look at what possible drops that he can play around. He gets introduced with a Yasuo pair and a Nasus pair, but he needs to make 30. That Yasuo pair is pretty good because while he does have Ash, he doesn't have that laser core active, nor does he have any duelists. So when you're looking at your pairs, think about what's the highest tier impact unit that you can play. In this case, holding a Nasus pair is a one cost and holding the Yasuo pair is a two cost. And he sells everything else to make gold because he knows that it's not worth holding on to say that Vi one, for example. So now he makes that gold. He's at 40 and now he has that Yasuo pair. So he's scouting. He sees both of the wind streakers are available in his pool. He's trying to maximize his positioning. Oh my goodness. Re replay. Hits the Twisted Fate with the Shiv and level 6. So this is going to be another loss here. And Setsuko's hoping just to kill a couple of units, which he does. He kills two, but... Oh, he kills three. Okay. So pretty good outcome here, all things considered. Setsuko ends up taking a pretty nasty loss. Oh, that, that is terrible news. That is just terrible news. Setsuko just lost another one after winning two. All right. So let's pause here on the 3-2 hero augment. We lost our win streak once again. And now we're introduced with 223, which makes you want to pick the three cost hero augment. A lot of times people like to pick support as well for Build Different because it's about the sum of the parts for the team. Build Different isn't really about one single individual carry. A lot of times it's really about just having too much stats on the board overall because you're playing high quality units. A lot of Build Different boards wants to scale up to four cost and just play a lot of quality four cost that are two stars and just have that momentum from overwhelming amount of stats. So if we're looking at three cost hero augments, the best support ones to have a team wide effect are things like Gash Giant Slayer for Morgana or Armor Dillo. But he's offered a really good one here with Small Game Hunter because 
it gives a huge amount of buff to his team now. Not to mention Pike has good AoE CC and he is also high impact now because most people don't have a lot of health. So Small Game Hunter is able to activate. Let me slam the IE as well. But I also really like the fact that Pike doesn't have traits that overlap with Build Different very easily. You have to get three Rift Walkers, meaning you can play Pike and Jin and not deactivate Jin with Build Different. Uh, later on in the game and that also applies to a bunch of other things if you take you know let's say we got the Camille augment admin renegade that means that we don't have the ability to play other admin units in case we hit that and so Sasuke is doing a good job recognizing that small game hunter is very good and pike is one of the most versatile two costs that you can play around in this trade because those active traits are not going to be easily activated Sasuke back on the wind train going up against Jax 2 this player rolled down oh this Jax player also went with <laughs> Infinity Edge Slam with Jeweled Lotus, uh, quite sus, but Jeweled Lotus is that good, and it doesn't matter when you have this much tempo with Jax, and Setsuko loses again. Okay, so this is now starting to get into worrisome territory where now not only are we not streaking, but we're also on win-loss win, which is kind of a bad scenario for our economy. So now Setsuko has to figure out how to maximize his board strength without rolling. We already chose not to roll at level 6 because we did end up hitting a 2-star rel, so we don't have many pairs to roll for. If we're in Setsuko's spot, you have to think about whether or not you want to commit to a 4-1 roll down at level 7, or just take your punishment and try to go to fast 8 and roll down for all the 4 costs. Okay, this was actually a very fortunate moment where we hit a pike and we hit misfortune so we got the aces in okay so we end up replacing the ash two with a samira one which is generally a good ratio this is something you can just memorize but a four cost one star is about equivalent to a one cost two star in power let me say that again a four cost one star is about equivalent to power as a one cost two star. And this is just the way TFT units scale up. And so he recognizes that Ash has pretty much worn out her welcome. And if he wants to get these two ace active, he can play these items immediately on Samira and have the possibility of winning and making gold. Very close fight, but looks like this Camille goes down before disarming. No. Okay, we got the win anyway. So huge win here for Sasuko. He gets to make 50. And remember, Sasuko wants to get to level eight with as much gold and HP as possible. So every win that he can muster is huge. So hitting that Pike 2, this Rel 2, this Pantheon 2 is very nice for him to stabilize. So Sasuko thought a little bit about whether or not he wanted to play some of these other one cost units like Ram is back in, but they actually scales very well with build different in particular because it's almost like he has a duelist trade active. And this goes back to what we're talking about fundamentally. What is good with attack speed? What is good with that HP? And so Satsuko is bringing good balance to his composition. He has two strong frontliners in the two-star rel and the, the two-star pantheon, a good support unit in the form of Hike, and then also has that vein to go in for backline DPS to complement Samira and that misfortune does hit Yasuo, so that means it's time to say goodbye to that vein. She did a great amount of, you know, 1,000 damage in the fight is more than uh, everybody else that isn't Samira with two items. So she did great. But this is the flexibility that you have to have. Adapt to what you are hitting. And so Satsuko says, I don't want to roll. I have to play around the pairs that I'm hitting. So we get two rods and immediately slams a death cap. He wants those flat stats. Remember... He doesn't get a lot of flat stats from his traits. There's no ability to get AP from Anima Squad, for example. So he slams that death cap to get those flat stats. Going back to why he was a little bit more hesitant to slam things like the Affinity Edge because he didn't get that raw AD, that flat AD for his units. But now he's trying to set up multiple forms of damage. I like that he's playing around Aurelian Soul, get that anti-heal. And that tier is easier to play around. It could be both a frontline item or a backline support item for mana or hand of justice for example it's a much more flexible component than rod rod tends to be only ap focused unless you want to make something like a rage blade which isn't particularly good because he has a lot of attack speed or lock it which is not particularly useful oh my god huge win again Sasuko by squeezing out every bit of stats is getting these very crucial victories to preserve hp and not have to roll all right so we're pausing here on the 4-2 augment 
Asuko hasn't made his choice yet. Let's let's walk through the, the pros and cons of each different augment here. So cybernetic implants is really nice because it complements his lack of AD, but it's not particularly good on almost any of his other backliners outside of Samira. Not particularly strong on Aesol or the Misfortune, which I think long-term he wants to play around. Throw the Hunt's really interesting to me because it's just really strong to keep your carries into the fight. So it's something that's worth consider. Component Grab Bag is also interesting because he wants to itemize multiple carries. That's something that if I were to choose one, I would lean towards Component Grab Bag because I want to make sure that both MF and Samira are threats in their own. The absolute worst case scenario would be Setsuko getting like two items on Samira, two items on MF, and like two items on his frontliner unit. You really want to make sure to get three items because items multiply with each other. And you don't want to spread that out because then all of a sudden it's no longer as effective. So my conclusion is we either take component grab bag or we re-roll. And I think Setsuko would want to re-roll in this spot. His last augment, he might as well try to go for something better. Thrill's like okay here for combat power, but uh, I think I would re-roll. He re-rolls and he gets Cyber Shell. Cyber Shell is much better if he does have a AD focused lobby, but we saw a lot of AP from other compositions in the in the lobby so i don't think cyber shell is particularly strong here ace crest you're not trying to activate traits so why would you take something that gives you the ability to fit traits in and it's not like ace crest is particularly good to go three out of one ace so nothing there and portable forge it's not the strongest in this spot because you rather have forge at the beginning of the game since you get that item early and you can play around and get the most value Portable Forge is weaker at 4-2 than it is 2-1, but still better than nothing here because we talked about the ability to itemize your carries. So we get offered Obsidian Cleaver, which I think is already off the table since we already have Last Whisper, so we lose half the value of Cleaver. They did buff it recently, but Cleaver is good for armor sundering and magic shredding, so I think that Cleaver is half effective here. That's off the table. Death Defiance could be something that's used for frontline, so it's kind of about whether or not Sasuko wants to start itemizing his MF, which we know we're keeping, or itemize his frontline with Death Defiance, and it could go on things like Garen or Warwick, whatever four cost frontliner that he ends up playing around. I personally lean towards Zonia's. I just think it's a higher cap power level, not to mention that it reduces the burden for his miss or for his Samira to have to solo carry and deal all that damage. So if he can get that third item with this tier on MF, I think he's in a pretty good spot. Goes up against one of those AP compositions. We talked about how playing around Cyber Shell means that there's going to be a lot of aid in the lobby. He sees Power Grid. He sees the Spell Slingers. Uh, he sees that he's getting nothing done with his carries. Oh my god, he got 7 0 We talked about how he's trying to skip level 7. He's not trying to roll. And he took a really bad loss. We can't really be boarding that many losses like that. So he texts in Jim, trying to just get more of those four costs. And he's pre-leveling here because he knows that he's committed to going for a big level eight roll down. Goes back to why winning things like that three, six, and four, one is so crucial because of those two stars that he was able to make with like the Yasuo and the Pike. It's because he's able to have that extra HP. Goes up against another spell slinger composition so yep it's going back to why we didn't pick cyber shell and now at this point sasuko is probably thinking about what are some of the units that he's going to play around and what can justify replacing his two-star units if he hits one star four cost that is not worth replacing the two-star units as you can see for example he didn't replace yasuo 2 with like an aso one so he really needs to make sure to land those two-star four costs otherwise He's going to have to hold on to these two star two costs. Thinking about probably completing an MF item, I'm looking at the sword for Shojin. He loses that. Maybe a frontline item now, like Warmogs is also good. So he's using his Warmogs to complement the resistances that he's going to get from his solo frontliner. And it's on a Viego, which is a four cost. Viego, not traditionally a really strong four cost unit to play around. Okay, Jin pair, Garen, which means we have to replace the Rel. Garen is definitely good enough to replace Rel because. He has that AoE CC. He hits Misfortune 2 and Warwick 2. So those are units that he can play around. And all of a sudden, his board does look better. Okay, so he ends up replacing the Jin. I was going to say that his front line is Garen 1, and that's it. Honestly, I still think his front line's a little bit too weak, but he doesn't have that many better options because he can't play Vi since he has the Brawler with Warwick. So he's hoping that Warwick can act as a damage sponge, kind of like an off-tank, off-carry. 
and he's rewarded. And this goes back, just look at that damage report on the right side. Build different is the sum of his parts. It's not really about one single star on the team. You can see everybody contributes, even this you know, random two-star Yasuo was able to match damage comparable to some of the other units on the board. So Setsuko has cleared one checkpoint, which is to finish the rest of the stage while preserving his HP. And he did get a little bit fortunate, right? He hit things like that MF2 and that Warwick 2. But it's really cool because most people don't recommend things like playing around Yasuo and two-star Sona and two-star Warwick. A lot of times people are saying you want to play Echo 2, you want to play Garen 2, you want to play the Aces. He's really just making do with whatever he can get right now in order to stabilize his board. Scouts around. I like his positioning. He has stone play Gargoyle. He wants all the aggression to be focused onto the Garen. Not to mention the more units that surround Garen get stunned with his Mecha Justice. He's going up against Jax 2, who is still in the middle of rerolling. There's actually pretty good matchmaking RNG because uh, this person is still not committed to fully sending to hit Jax 3 yet. That being said, uh, looks like he takes yet another loss. All right, this is still a little bit scary. Not entirely sure if we're going to top four. Hits another MF, and he holds on to it. Uh, I'm curious if he's going to play multiple of the same unit, which actually goes into another thing about build different. Copies of the same unit still benefit from build different. So if you have an opportunity to play another two star of it, go for it. Okay, we talked about Shojin has the availability to go for that. Finds Mordekaiser, so he has three slash one ace can tech that in over, say, a Leona. Kind of worth holding on to those pairs, because if he's a two-star Belvet, it's better than one-star Jin with build different. Oop, hits Garen pair. Jin two, okay. Ends up selling to hit this Jin two, and all of a sudden, it seems like we're kind of piecing things together. All we're missing is a Garen two, and now we have three out of one ace. I like a either, probably a second Warmogs, actually, now that we have the resistances, and goes back to what we were saying. He's stacking all of his items, and he's also leaning into what makes his composition strong. He has MF2, but he's only has Samira 1. So if he makes GS, like a Giant Slayer, that's only going to be on a Samira 1 versus a Shoujin on Samira 2. That being said, we just took another loss. Now we're starting to get into the danger zone of where we're probably not going to bot four, or at least we're playing for top four only. We hit another MF2, which I think is probably better. I'd probably play MF2 over this Mordekaiser 1, I think, at this point. He doesn't even think about... He's thinking about maybe not even playing this Fiddlesticks. All right, so he replaced another Garen 1 on his board because he made Garen 2, so he puts Fiddlesticks for his frontliner, and he does put in this Misfortune as well. So a lot of switching in and out and recognizing that he can have it all. He can play his backline, which is actually quite balanced. He has four backliners with the double MF, Jin, and the Samira, and he has enough frontline with this Garen 2 now to stabilize. And all of a sudden, he's fully online. Everything is two-starred except for the legendaries, which is totally acceptable. Still playing his support pike. Uh, I like that he placed a bow on the Jin, by the way, instead of putting the bow on, you know, Samira, for example, because he's looking for a complete item for Samira. Knows that he'll eventually get to it. Oh, sells the Samira one to play items on Jin two. That just makes sense. Two star Jin is better than one star Samira, but now he's kind of punished for playing that bow on the Jin. So honestly, kind of a small mistake from Setsuko here. Thought about playing the Urgot because he was playing also around this Janna with Rainy. It's actually a great shout out that he checked the weather and played Janna because it's worth losing that build different value on this unit to get Janna in for that Rainy to get the Misfortune mana buffs. And it looks like that mattered. Even though it did get shrouded, it's nice to have that CC. It's nice to have that mana, which goes back to another concept we can talk about with build different is even in the late game scenarios, you don't have to have built different value on all your units. Similar to just like, you don't have to have full value of your hero augment on all your units. Satsuko ends up going for a Chalice, recognizing that right now the stars of the show are his two misfortunes and his Jin. Gonna split up his units. Doesn't need full Janna value, which I think is a good call out. I think a lot of people full greed, but he gets punished by AoE, gets punished by Shrouds, which he knows is in the field right now. Going up against a Jax 3. Jax looks pretty strong. This looks like a bad fight. Oh, Zonia's kicked in. 
Oh my God, goes back to why we took that Zonia's a crucial victory here for Setsuko. And now all of a sudden he's won three in a row and it looks like he's going to barely clear top four. So this is a really good salvage to play build different for a top four. He's really thinking about whether or not he can squeeze in this Urgot. But the reality is with Samira gone, he can't really afford to take out the easiest unit to replace, which is the Mordekaiser one. It's two out of one ace and it doesn't look like he's going back to Samira because he has this Jin too. He's scouting now to make sure that he doesn't get caught off guard. The worst thing that can happen right now is whether or not these Zephyrs hit things like the Garen because Garen is his entire front line. So he does end up dodging that. Jin gets Zephyr, not great. I think he'd prefer that to be the, the Fiddlesticks, but that's okay. And now it looks like all of his board is starting to get way too strong for it to get overwhelmed. And now all of a sudden, his Misfortune's casting, his Jin's kind of working together. This Power Grid Sona is not strong enough. And says Suko is streaking all of a sudden. So Suko has weathered the storm, pun intended. Now looking to see if he can play for a top three or better because he's on a streak. So all of the small things that Setsuko has done has been able to give him that streak. And now... They have been the difference maker between him preserving HP and having just enough gold to roll, spike. Now he's also considering holding these extra Garen's, going for Garen 3 or another copy of Garen. Spark seems to be his best damage item. He has a fiddlestick that can hold it. He also doesn't have any magic resistance shred outside of more cards or casting. So I do like it for his best damage output. If he had another opportunity to itemize the second misfortune, I think he would. I think the best case scenario would have been either another chalice or an aura item like Zeke's. Ooh, finds another Garen 2, replaces the Fiddlesticks. Again, going back to fundamentals, two stars are better than one stars. Can place it on Pike because Pike ends up being very difficult to kill because he ends up zooming across the map. So you see how Pike goes and stuns the top left. Does end up dying. So a little bit actually unfortunate because I think Pike got swept up in the AoE. But I generally like that Pike because it does survive easier. Oh my goodness, ends up losing to the Twisted Fate. Thankfully secures the top four. So job well done. And now we're playing for bonus LP. He's rolling to see if he can get that Garen three or potentially spike things like this. Mordekaiser two would not be mad if that's the case. Hits a Janna two. Okay, so very fortunate outcome. Now ends up playing a Syndra potentially over an MF two copy because that Syndra will end up pulling up units anyways. Nice little swap here. Recognizes that he wants the greed for this pike value. And now Syndra with that mana will throw in things like that extra copy of Mordekaiser. He wants to get more units in the way to stall for his MF and his Jin. Really nice call here. Once more, Setsuko is just showing you how to optimize his board strength with every small little shop detail that he has noticed. And now all of a sudden, because he got a really crucial victory, Setsuko is playing for top two, top one, potentially, if he goes for a double kill. And now he's looking at both the ghost as well as the real player. This is Setsuko playing for first, recognizing that how he positions against stop, drop, and roll the ghost, as well as Kanto, the actual player he's facing up against, might secure him in first place. Ah, oh, we got punished by the Zephyr. Sona's on the same side as Misfortune. That's not great. And it looks like Echo is also closing in on Jin. Not a fantastic spot here for Setsuko, but stop, drop, and rolls at 2 HP, and maybe he positioned against him. Oh, no, actually, it's Kanto. Kanto is the one that he queued up in against and got that win. So Setsuko looks like he has second secured. It is. And that's a fantastic second, especially given that Setsuko didn't get that momentum and didn't get that build different streak. All things considering, the boards here look very strong. Look at this Riftwalker Jin with two-star Urgot, Renegade Spat as well. A very strong Laser Core Temple Line for Re-Replay who was streaking early and was push pressuring the rest of the board. And look at the fact that three-star Ezreal and three-star Jax did not top four despite having really good setups. I mean, you look at the underground cash out player with Ezreal 3 Rising Spell Force. I'm surprised that didn't actually get to the top four. This was a really good demonstration of Satsuko's knowledge of how to play strongest board and the power of Sexo. So there you have it, a fine example of why Setsuko is considered to be one of the best, if not the best, strongest board players currently in all of Team Fight Tactics. This man is truly different. It's no surprise why his stream is exploding and how he's finally piecing it all together for some dominant tournament runs. What'd you guys think about Setsuko's play? Let me know in the comments below and I'll reply to it. And I'll see you guys next time for more Into Deep with Frodan.